<laughs> okay. All right. Getting this done. Uh oh. All right, here we go. That's better. All right, here we go. That's better. All right. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Woke up and I'm feeling lonely. This girl got a way of showing me. Some days it lifts you up. Some days it'll call you bluff. Man, most of my days I ain't got enough. And all I know is you're my only home. When I'm down, when I'm down, when I'm down, I just need you. Hey, blessings of the Lord be upon you there. Pastor Penky, scenario, it is well with you and your house, I declare that. And your crusade is going to be well. Your crusade is going to be well. It's going to be fantastic. Hey, OP, sending a shout of blessings to you. Uh oh, sending a shout of blessings to you and your house. <laughs> Hey, it's a Friday edition of Faith Moment coming to you live, bringing you Jesus, nothing but Jesus. He is so good. Jesus is so good. And I'm bringing you live Norma. Come on, start celebrating in the Lord. It is Friday. We thank God. God is good. He is good. Mighty, mighty good. And so we continue to rejoice and be glad in him. All right? Let nothing stop you from enjoying yourself in the Lord. Amen. Thank you, OP, for sharing. Come on, everybody, share it. Now, share it. Share the broadcast. Share it and be a blessing to somebody. When you meet Jesus, what do you think will happen? When you meet Jesus, think about it for a second. When you meet Jesus, what do you think will happen? Oh, that's my question for you. When you meet Jesus, what do you think will happen? Think about it. Share the broadcast. Be a blessing to somebody. Like it. Share it. All right. Put it all across board. Let somebody know Jesus is the Lord. But the question is, when you meet Jesus, what do you think will happen? That's my question. When you meet Jesus, what do you think will happen? Many, 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 many people met Jesus in the days in which he was physically walking on the planet Earth. And he's still here with us in the spirit. But many encountered him and when they did, their lives were never the same again. Their lives were never the same again. Listen, share the broadcast and be a blessing to somebody. All right, be a blessing to somebody by sharing this broadcast. Today, I want to just talk to you about when you meet Jesus, something happens. Many people met Jesus in the days of him. And uh, we see that 
Their lives were never, never, never the same again. And so today I want, I want you and I to look at some of the examples of what took place in the life of people and see if you can get your, your share when you meet Jesus. A lot of people met Jesus. Lot, lots and lots of people met Jesus. And when they did, their lives were never the same. And beloved, I'm telling you this, that this is so, so important that when you meet Jesus, your life never, never stays the same again. So you need to meet him. You need to have an encounter with Jesus just so that you will be in the same place as others were. Their lives were never the same. Now watch this. Watch this. Come with me to, come with me to John chapter 5. John chapter 5 verse 1 to 15. John chapter 5 verse 1 to 15. Please share the broadcast and be a blessing to somebody. John chapter 5 verse 15. The scripture tells us that there was a, there, there was a guy who met Jesus at the pool. Jesus healed this guy at the pool. But let's look at that for a second. John chapter, chapter 5. Let's look at it from the verse one from the verse one and to verse 15 john chapter five now jesus after this the bible says there was a fifth a feast of the jews and jesus went up to jerusalem okay now in jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool which is called in hebrew but said that it have five areas to it now there was a guy that lay down there paralyzed a lot of people too were there now people go there you know for a time where the bible says that watch this in verse 3 in this lay a great multitude of sick people blind lame paralyzed waiting for the what for the movement or for the moving of the water okay for an angel of the lord will come down at a certain time into the pool and stir up the water and then whoever steps in first after that okay after the stirring when they get themselves in they are made well from whatever the diseases they have now this guy this particular guy the bible says has been there for a long time has been there for a long 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 time listen look at chapter um, uh, chapter 5 of John from verse 1 to verse 15 from verse 1 I want you to read that you know I'm not going to be reading all these for you today but please read that John chapter 5 verse 1 to 15 not just 5 15 1 to 15 now I want you to see something here that Jesus the man, the man asked Jesus, he says, Sir, I, I have no one, no man to put me into the pool when the angel comes and stir this thing now. And so he says, I have, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming in into the pool, another person steps ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Rise up, take up your, your bed and walk. And immediately, as he encountered Jesus with that situation, for so many, many, many years of his life, he got up and began to walk. Jesus said to this guy, rise up. Well, the guy's issue was to Jesus that many people were going ahead of him. And anytime the pool was stirred by the angel, a lot of people, when he makes an attempt to go get it, some go ahead of him and get it. Listen, th this might sound like, like a, a, a life issue to somebody that you, 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 you think that, you know, every time you are making an attempt to as achieve something, something just happened. When you meet Jesus, that situation would never be the same. Michael, I send a shout of blessings to you. When you meet Jesus, that situation will turn around. This guy said to Jesus that every time I make an attempt to go into the pool, 
somebody steps ahead of me. Well, Jesus told him that don't worry. You get up, pick up your bed and walk. <laughs> and he began, he began to do that. So the man, look at this very carefully. Look at this now. Look at this. Look at this. The Jews therefore said to, the, to him, who was killed in the, in the Sabbath, that it is not lawful. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. The Jews, the, the religious people, were telling this guy who has been healed that it is not lawful for you to be healed on a, on a Sabbath day. <laughs> oh my goodness. Do you know, have you met anybody who you, you're trying to get ahead and telling you some, 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 some stuff contrary to what you're trying to do? Have you met anybody like that? Beloved, there are a lot of people out there. When you're trying to when you meet Jesus and your life is beginning to turn around and take shape, they come and tell you all manner of things. Don't listen to them. When you meet Jesus, your life will never be the same again. And this is what happened. This guy met Jesus and he, being paralyzed, got up. His life was never be the same. Was never, never the same. Now, another scenario here. Look at John chapter 9 verse 25. John chapter 9 verse 25. Another guy met Jesus. Watch this. Listen, we're talking about when you meet Jesus. What happened? Look at John chapter 9 verse 25. Jesus, watch this now. Jesus healed this, 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 um, this blind guy. Jesus healed. I want you to please read it. If it's Friday. I want you to spend time and please read. It's so, so important when I tell you to read. Because if you don't read, beloved, you will not get the exact picture of what I'm telling you. Uh, yeah, you have to read. Jesus read. We know that Jesus read. So how do you say you don't read? Well, I don't know how to read. Listen, ask the Holy Spirit who will help you to, to read. That reminds me of many years ago. That um, one of our, you know, uh, Bible study group, we had a lady in there who never attended school before, wasn't educated. But there was, there was something that stuck with her. And that was the statement that says, and it came to pass. And it came to pass. That is all that was interested to this lady to know. And so, as she couldn't read, However, she bought a Bible. She didn't have a Bible because she knows she couldn't read. But she, she bought a Bible for that reason of it came to pass. And then one Sunday afternoon when she came for Bible study, she asked that, can you somebody show me where, you know, the scripture says, and it came to pass. And it came to pass. Well, that was open for her, she took that and put a paper in between that area. That is all she needed. Anytime she goes through any difficulty or any kind of challenge, all that she remembers is it came to pass. Beloved, it will come to pass when you meet Jesus. That situation will never be the same. When you meet Jesus, that situation will never be the same. So you have to meet Jesus. You have to encounter Jesus. This is a guy, look at, look at um, John chapter 9. Look at John chapter 9 verse 25. Look at that. Jesus answered and says, whether, watch this now. Now, this, this is, this is, this is uh, a scenario where this guy met Jesus and Jesus told him to go and wash. All right, Jesus took a sand spit it, mix it up, rub it on his, on his eyes, and told him to go to the pool of Siloam and wash his face. Well, he did that, and then he began to see. Now, that was now that became a challenge for some people. Do you know there are people when you know, things are, begin, things are going well for you, they have a problem? Yeah, there are people like that. <laughs> they, they, get, they have a problem just because things are going okay for you.
But listen, don't let that stop you. Don't let that stop you from having an encounter with Jesus. I want you to read this whole story. It's going to bless you. Are you listening to me? It's going to bless you. But I want to share something with you in verse 20, 25. So the, the Pharisees and all these religious people, okay, call this guy and ask him, he says, who, who made you well? The guy found out it was Jesus and he said it was Jesus. Well, they have a problem with that. And so you better not mention that name and all that. Okay? So they asked his parents, they even asked his parents that this guy, we know that he was, he was born blind. How did he get well? Look at verse 22 down here. Let me start from verse 22 down here. And so his parents said, said these things because the, the, uh, oh, 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 no, no, no. Let me take it. Let me take it from verse, uh, verse, verse 20. The parents answered the question and said, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We know that. That this is our son and he was born blind. Verse 21. But by what means he now sees, we do not know. Or who opened his eyes, we do not know. He is of age, so therefore he will speak for himself. Verse 22. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews. Aha! That is some of the problems some, some people have. You are scared of these religious people thinking that, well, that's my pastor. I can speak over my pastor and that kind of stuff. Beloved, when you meet Jesus, huh? when you meet Jesus, your life is never the same. Watch this now. His parents said this because they fear the Jews. For the Jews um, ag uh, had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was Christ, he will be put out of the synagogue. If anybody confessed, if anybody said that, mentioned the name Jesus Christ, this, that person will be kicked out of the church. Basically, that's what, that's what it was saying. Verse 23, and therefore his parents says, the guy is of age, so you ask him. So 24, they came and asked the guy, called the guy who was blind, and said to him, give glory, give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. Then they are saying to the, the, the blind, the, the guy who was formerly blind, that the person who healed him, who is Jesus, is a sinner. As to what sins he has committed, oh yeah, he committed the sin of, of healing the blind on a Sabbath day. The law. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Jesus broke the law. The law that put people in bondage, Jesus took people out of bondage, so he broke the law. My goodness, when you understand the true freedom in Christ, I tell you, it, it, you look back, you sit back, and you wonder, my, what is going on? Watch this now. And so they said Jesus is a sinner. Well, the guy answered and says, whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing that I know, and that, that is, though I was blind, now I see. That's one thing I know. I don't know whether the guy is a sinner or he is a sinner because he healed me on a Sabbath day. And so therefore, according to your religiosity and according to your laws, he is a sinner. I don't know. You know that. But what I know is that I have had an encounter with him and with my problems and he has made me free. When you meet Jesus, when you meet Jesus, your life is never the same again. When you meet Jesus and they kept on pressing this guy, there's a, there's a part here which, which was so ex exciting that they came to a place where the guy asked them, Wait a minute, do you also, you know, you keep asking me and this year, do you want to be his disciples as well? Do you want to do that? Because when you meet Jesus, beloved, your life is never the same. The same again. Your life is never the same again and will never be the same again. Look at chapter 4, John chapter 4. Look at John chapter 4, 
When you meet Jesus, that's all I'm talking about today. When you meet Jesus, please share the broadcast. Share this broadcast and be a blessing to somebody. When you meet Jesus, now Jesus had an encounter, okay, this time with this woman, a Samaritan woman at the well, where the woman came to fetch water and met Jesus there. Jesus told him to give some water to drink. And the woman seeing Jesus, looking at Jesus, he says, no, we, you and you people and us, we are not together. Are you coming to ask me of water to drink and all that? No, we don't do that. Jesus says, well, if you know the person who's asking you for water to drink, you will, you will, you will even do that because he will give you a water that will never let you be test, testy again. All right. Not, not, you won't, go, you won't, you will you will not have that situation. Now, watch this now. Verse 22. The woman said to Jesus, you people worship what you do not, um, what, um, oh, 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 no, 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 no. What? Verse 19. Verse 19. I, I'm just excited with myself. Verse 19. What did it? The woman said to Jesus, said, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worship on this mountain and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Now Jesus said to this woman, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem to worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for. Salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is the, is the hour when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And God is spirit and those who worship him as worship him. The woman said to him, I know Watch this now. Encounter, encounter, encounter with Jesus. Verse 25. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called a Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things, all things. Jesus said to her, I who spoke to you, am he. I who spoke to you, I am he. Now, there's something interesting here that as the woman encountered Jesus and talking to her back and forth, the disciples came back going to find food, came back and saw that Jesus was talking to this woman. Probably asking, is he asking the woman for food or what? The woman later on had to run and tell everybody that she has met the Messiah. She has met the Christ. She has met Jesus. Her life was never the same. Beloved, anytime you meet Jesus, anytime you meet Jesus, your, your life never stays the same again. When you meet Jesus, you're never, you will never, never, never be the same again. My question to you is, How do you think your situation is going to be when you meet Jesus? How do you think you will become when you meet Jesus? What question would you ask Jesus when you meet him? You see, scripture says that they that worship him must do that in spirit. And in truth, today, Jesus is not physically on the face of this earth, but his spirit is with us. God sent him to come and pay the price of the sins of you and me so that we will have opportunity to have a closer relationship with him. If you receive him, if you receive Jesus, that will put you into that place of a closer relationship with the Lord. It will also guarantee your everlasting life. Because eternal life is only found in Jesus. Let me show you something in John chapter 3. Look at John chapter 3. Come with me to John chapter 3. And look at the 36th verse. Look at the 36th verse of John. 
And I read, quote, He who believes in the Son has everlasting life or eternal life. And he who does not believe, the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abides on him. Whoever believes in the Son, Jesus, will have eternal life. Whoever does not believe, you will not see eternal life. Think about that for a second. But rather, the wrath of God, the anger of God, the displeasement of God will continue to hang on you. Now, why is that? Because for God so loved you that he gave his only, only begotten son. Do you know how difficult it is to give your only stuff? Even you, it's that difficult. Give you an example. You have the own, the, the last dime. <laughs> like somebody said, the last dime. It is always and naturally difficult for you to give it. But God so loved you and me that he gave his only begotten son and that whosoever, now get this revelation here, whosoever believe in him, you will not perish. Watch this now, but you will have everlasting or eternal life. Don't you want that? I do. And so I receive him. It is my prayer that you will do. And if you're that person listening to me that you want to do that, I want to pray with, the, with you this prayer. It's a prayer of salvation. In the, in the book of Romans chapter 9, 10, you see the scripture will say that. I want to take you there. Let's, let's look at that. Come with me to Romans, Romans chapter, chapter 10. Um, Romans chapter, chapter 10. All right, look at Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. What does, in verse 8, but what does it say? The word is near you. Watch this now. Even in your mouth and in your heart. That is a word of faith that we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe him in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You'll be saved. Look at verse, verse 10. For with the heart, for with the heart one believes to righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. So your salvation is 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 guaranteed here based on you believing in him. And that connects to what we read in John chapter 3, verse 36. That whoever believes in him. When you believe in him, you have eternal life. But whoever does not believe in him will not see life. And so you see that. You see that. Here it says, for verse 10, that is Romans chapter 10, verse 10. For with the heart one believes to righteousness, and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. And so I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. You know that we believe with our heart. We receive through our ears what we see or what we see, what we hear or what we see. And it enters into our heart. And, and we believe, our believing system is our heart. And so scripture says, you believe, you believe the Lord Jesus in your heart. And you make a confession of him with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. You'll be saved from what? You'll be saved from eternal damnation into eternal life. So let's pray. Let's pray, say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this teaching and message. Forgive me as a sinner. I believe you in my heart that God sent you to pay for the price of my sins. I receive you now into my heart and I confess you with my mouth that God raised you from the dead. Now, Lord Jesus, 
baptize me with your spirit, the Holy Spirit, to dwell with me and to live in me, that I may have a relationship with you and with the Father. And I thank you. Amen. That's it, beloved. That's it. You don't, you don't need to, it's not, it's not about, about sweating and, and, and cutting yourself until you, you see blood and, and going through all those rigorous whatever before you, listen, no, you, you don't struggle to believe. You believe as you pick up water when you are thirsty to drink. And that's what you have done. And like Jesus says in John chapter 3 verse Verse 3, he told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Nicodemus did not understand what born again is. Born again is literal. It's, it's just a simple meaning of having a spiritual rebirth. Remember, we are spirit in a physical body, in an earthly clothes. There's a spiritual transformation that has taken place by you believing and making that confession of faith. Your salvation is come. Now, you have to continue with him. Relationship is built on a regular basis. It's not as and when. Relationship is built. You build relationship by, you know, um, having um, uh, a regular dialogue. So continue to do that. How do you do that? By reading your word. Get yourself a copy of the Bible, which we I, we, I call it the Manual for Daily Life and Living. Get a copy and read it. Now, listen to this carefully. If you don't have a Bible, ask us for one. Send a request to us. We'll send you a Bible free of charge that you don't need to pay. You don't need to pay for it. We'll send you free of charge wherever you are. Send your address, your name, a full address. And say that I need a Bible. We'll send you one. Start reading it. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you to read and understand. Because you have to understand it. Exactly what God inspired his people to write down for you and I. Okay? Now, I want to also encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. This way you can get this message and other messages that will be a blessing to you. The YouTube address is go to YouTube, look for Patrick Quino Global Ministries or Patrick Quino Ministries and click the, the word that says subscribe. This way you are in and can also get notification when we come on live. And finally, I want to encourage you to also check us out and to know a little bit about us. Go to our website. The address is www.patrickquinoglobalministries.org. Do that. Again, the address is minis global ministries.org And get to know a little bit about us. There's a lot of information there that will be a blessing to you. And you can also request a Bible from there as well. There are a couple books out there. Um, Straight Out of Love, you're going to see that by Lady J. You can copy, you can get a copy by requesting that as well. Or you can get that from Amazon Books or Barnes and Nobles. But the most important thing I want you to know that you don't have no trouble. You don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And remember, when you meet Jesus, when you meet Jesus, your life is never the same and will never be the same. Share this broadcast. Be a blessing to somebody and like it. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Until then, all you need is your faith in God. And in all that getting, get understanding. I'll see you soon. God bless you.